Hey, hey, my name is Alicia and I love collecting dolls. So while I do love collecting all dolls, I have a special place in my heart for dolls that look like me, black dolls. So I'm so excited to be able to share my love of dolls with the world. But that being said, if you enjoy this type of content, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. So today I want to talk about the Black Barbie timeline. And I use air quotes because there's going to be some honorable mentions, dolls not manufactured by Mattel that own the trademark to Barbie. Um, so I'm going to be referring to dolls with similar size measurements. So those between like 11 to 12 inches in there. Um, sometimes they're just made by other companies or they're often referred to as clones, which may be cheaper kind of copycat versions. So that's where we'll use those air quotes a little bit. Um, Mattel first released its Barbie back in 1959 and that's Barbara Millicent Roberts also known as Barbie. Um, following the initial release of Barbie, there were several versions of Barbie friends and family. It wasn't until 1967 that Mattel introduced colored Francie. So we're gonna hop into it. Oops, but before we do hop into it, I'm gonna talk about the initial releases for black dolls roughly up to the late 1990s, early 2000s, not that I do not care about dolls after that point. The doll world was becoming more inclusive at that time and there were many doll releases. So we'll be here all day. Um, with that, this video will probably be in multiple parts. So grab a snack and now let's hop into it. So let's get into this Black Barbie timeline, 1967. Francine Francie Fairchild. Francie Fairchild was marketed as Barbie's modern cousin from Europe. At a little over 11 inches tall, the Francie doll was shorter than Barbie but taller than Skipper, making her presumably between the ages of the two. Francie paved the way for Barbie's transition into the mod era. Francie appeared to be only slightly younger than Barbie and had a much less shapely figure. The Francie doll was the first to feature rooted eyelashes. A colored Francie was first issued in 1967. And she was the first doll in the Mattel line with a truly dark complexion. However, the doll did not have typical African-American features since it was made with the same head molds as the Caucasian Francie doll. Because of this, a doll named Christy, first issued in 1968, is often considered the first true African-American doll in the Barbie line. The Francie doll was discontinued in 1976. 1968, Christy. There were four vintage Christy Barbie dolls, Talking Christy, Twist and Turn Christy, Live Action Christy, and Malibu Christy. Live action and Malibu Christie's had long hair and the others had short hair. The short hair dolls are frequently found with hair that has turned red over the years. That is normal. Dolls who retain their original dark brown, black hair are usually considered more valuable, by the way. The last known Christie doll was released in approximately 2006, Though Christy did appear in the 2015 movie Barbie and Her Sisters and the Great Puppy Adventure. Several Christy reproductions have been released since 2016, including Malibu Christy, Red, White, and Warm Christy, and a few others. The face molds for Christy have changed several times over the years. We'll touch on that in another video. The surname O'Neill is associated with the Nikki character, who is supposed to be Christy's sister but the surname has not been associated directly with Christie. We'll touch on Nikki in a bit. 1969, Julia. The Julia Barbie doll was one of the first celebrity Barbie dolls. It was introduced in 1969 along with Truly Scrumptious from the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Julia was a hit TV show that ran from 1968 to 1971. 
Diane Carroll played Julia Baker, a widowed single mom and registered nurse. This was a groundbreaking role because it was one of the first primetime shows to feature an African-American woman in a non-stereotypical role. Diane Carroll won a Golden Globe for her role as Julia. In 1969, Ebony Photo Magazine, Diane Carroll poses with the first two versions of the Julia doll, Talking Julia on the left and Nurse Julia, a twist and turn doll on the right. The Julia doll uses the original Christie head sculpt, and there were also several fashion packs released for the Julia doll. 1972, Wanda by Shadana Toys. In 1972, Shadana released Career Girl Wanda to inspire young girls to become what you wish. Career Girl Wanda had different career aspirations and each iteration came paired with a career-related accessory and a folder with career information. For example, Wanda Singer Performer came with a microphone. Wanda Skydiver had a parachute helmet and skydiving boots. I'll share more information on Shadana Toys at a later date. 1974, Sky by Kenner Toy Company. In 1974, Kenner debuted two sports action dolls, Dusty and her African-American friend Sky. Dusty wears a navy one-piece swimsuit and Sky's is pink. The dolls encourage kids to participate in outdoor activities like tennis, golf, softball, volleyball, fishing, and horseback riding. The dolls are 11 and a half inches tall around the height of Barbie, but their waists are thicker, chest smaller, and feet flatter. 1975, Kara. Kara appears in the Mattel Barbie line with her boyfriend, Curtis, alongside Barbie's other African-American couple, Brad and Christy in 1975. Kara was produced as Free Moving Kara, Ballerina Kara, and both Quick Curl and Deluxe Quick Curl Kara. She was produced with a Steffi face mold. She wasn't around long. They stopped manufacturing the Kara doll in 1976. 1976, Carla. Carla's one of Tootie's friends. She was only released in Europe. Um, so I'm very grateful to say that I do have one. I'll share a little bit more once I do my collection video. 1978, Cover Girl Darcy by Kenner Toy Company. Darcy Cover Girl was released in 1978. Like Barbie, Darcy was a fashion model. And like Barbie, Darcy had a variety of outfits and accessories. Darcy was posable. Also, Darcy's proportions were somewhat more realistic than Barbie's. But Darcy, her 12 and a half inch height made it impossible for the doll to share her clothes with Mattel's runway. 1970s, we have the Maxi Mod by M&S Shulman Incorporated. Manufactured by M&S Shulman Incorporated, this 11 and a half inch fashion doll was fully posable, twist and turned, had real eyelashes and rooted hair. The first dolls entered the market in the 60s with the first African-American dolls manufactured in the 70s. There was a release of mini mods later in the 70s and they had a few manufacturers, so Shillman, Totsy, and Gordy. It's also said that Shillman produced dolls before the Mattel brand. I'm not sure what kind of dolls they produced, but they did. 1970s, Superlina. Superlina was a 70s Holland clone made by Tom Fu Nakimer, and it was a clone of the Yellowstone Kelly by Mattel. This doll featured a similar face mold to the Steffi face mold with closed lips and no teeth showing. Superlina is now worth more than the Yellowstone Kelly. Let's take a break here, and I'll see you in the next video.